Alrighty guys, welcome back to our LEGO set review from Brick by Brick. In today's set number 9486, this is the LEGO Cars 2 Oil Rig Escape. Released in 2012 as part of the second year of Cars 2 sets, and final year. This is the largest of that, you know, second wave, containing 422 pieces and retailing for $49.99. I think I lied, I think there were more than two waves. But th this was the largest of the final wave. And, you know... It was one that I never got back when I was, you know, collecting the Cars 2 sets. But recently I found a good deal for this on eBay. It was for a pre-owned set, uh, but, you know, it was... I think I got it down to like $30. Um, but there was no confirmation of whether or not it was complete. However, it did appear that all of the cars themselves were there. So, you know, uh, I decided to take a chance on it. And it ended up being you know, complete aside from one of these and the flame piece on the top uh, of this thing, which is actually even cut off by the box. So, you know, there is that. And, you know, the box size is really kind of large for a $50 set. It's very square as well, a little peculiar, but it's a, it shows off all the features on the back. And this set was actually a little bit more interesting than I was expecting it to be in terms of just functionality wise. So, Let's uh, take a look. Before we get into the actual models, I do want to talk about the instruction booklets because there are four of them for $50 at, which is a lot. The first instruction booklet is very, very thin and just contains instructions for building Professor Z and Finn make missile and has a single ad at the back uh, on, well, I guess two ads, one at the back, inside and outside cover. And the second book, you know, moves us into building rem and a little uh, helipad as well as this guy is the best character um, Leland Turbo that's his name right and this one has a checklist of all the cars vehicles and this I believe includes all of the characters from 2011 plus a checklist for all the 2012 characters so you can see every single character I think the only ones that I'm missing at this point are that version of Finn this Ivan Mater and I think, I think I have all the others. Oh, I, aside from Red and um, Acer, obviously, I don't have those yet, but I need to order that set soon. And uh, I do have all of the 2011 cars. Uh, but, moving on, uh, third book just tells us how to build the uh, crane guy, as well as some random little side cargo stuff. And at the back of that one, there are no ads aside from on the very, very back cover. So I think that's a large page ad for each of the 2012 sets, aside from the uh, individual car sets, which this actually shows the entire part inventory of the set, and we do get those here in the back of this. So I think the advertisements in the instruction booklets here are kind of interesting, but there are a lot of advertisements uh, and a lot of instruction booklets, and this final large book tells you how to build the you know, large uh, structure itself and features you know, the traditional back of an instruction booklet ad. But yeah, there was a lot of time to dedicate to instruction booklets, so let's take a look at the model. First up for vehicles, we have Finn McMissile, who's an interesting build in this set because it's based off of his like surfing uh, sort of uh, appearance when he's breaking into the oil rig from the very opening scene of the movie. And instead of giving him wheels, they give him these spoiler pieces as the like the sort of skids, and they're exclusive in this color to the set, which is kind of cool. Uh, and you can actually like angle him to the side and get him to stand because of the edges on that part. Uh, his mouth uh, print is actually you know relatively uh, common. I think that's I think there's one other fin mouth uh, print, and. That one's significantly more common than this one. His eyes, though, are actually new. I didn't realize this. They have sort of the same eyebrow shape as the original version, but his eyes are centered here instead of looking to one side. Um, I think that's the difference, at least. Uh, and then there's also a flick fire missile, which we can shoot off um, with moderate success. And it does have this gun, which you can angle up and down. And I think that was introduced for Indiana Jones maybe, uh, but they reused it in a couple of car sets, and on the back he just has the little jet propulsion. It's interesting that these aren't covered up, but I think maybe it would have interfered with the, if you wanted to use the second stud as a missile launcher, and 
maybe would have prevented this from you know going straight on. But yeah, there are extra. It's interesting that they kept it. Uh, I mean, I guess I guess it sort of makes sense. But they could have just done a regular one by one brick there and not um, had a stud sticking out. But overall, this is a pretty decent figure and you know exclusive to this set, which I even more than I realized. Next up, we have Professor Zundep, who also appeared in. Uh, a couple of the first year of Cars 2 sets, but in those sets he also had a different uh, facial expression, We're making this one exclusive, uh, is this printed uh, one by, or 2 by 2 by 2 tall slope, and you know, it's a, it's a good facial expression. I think this one's more uh, accurately expressive than the original, and I like the use of the magnifying glass to give him the monocle. Uh, you know, just feels uh, nostalgic to me, just based on the original Cars 2 set, even if it's not you know, the most accurate look of all time. It is a nice way to get that in there. Uh, it is a little bit annoying that that can, you know, move back and forth and kind of cover two eyes or not cover any eyes. But if you position it right, I think it looks good. And, you know, it, it's a it's a uh, decent build for the vehicle. You can drive back and forth. It's got the multiple colors. Uh, you know, reasonably accurate and a good uh, variant here. And the next character included in the set is not exclusive, but he's so different from the previous version that he might as well be. Uh, this is Grem, and he was also otherwise in the Spy Jet Escape and a Polybag. Um, but the, both of those versions were the same. Uh, so this is the second design of him. And this one is in orange instead of red, which is probably a more accurate color. It's He's like a reddish orange. Um, I think I think it's probably more orange than red, but this looks like too bright orange to be the same color. So I don't know. It was really a tough call, and I actually like both versions. Um, this one I actually didn't like as much as I was expecting to, because I think it just I think the design of the previous one was a better shape, but maybe the colors were off. I don't know. I'll have to think more about that to be honest, but. Uh, this one, you know, it is a is a good looking version of him. He has the different mouth, which I, I think the mouth might be one of the things that bothers me, because the original Graham had a printed one by four tile, I believe, with the mouth on it, and then this down here was the bumper, and I, th I think I think that might be what's throwing me off here, but I don't know. I'm not not completely sure on it. It's uh it's a little bit interesting, and I. I don't know. As far as the roof is concerned, uh, the previous one had a 1x4 plate up here to bring a little bit of black into the color scheme, but otherwise the roof section is the same. The eyes are a good print, and you know he does have a little flamethrower that can be angled side to side, which you know sort of goes along with the other welding versions of the cars like Acer that we got in some of the other sets from this year. And he also has a flick fire missile, which is the same uh, in design as Finn's. And you know it, it works fine, and it's nice to get a little bit of you know shooting feature with this character. And then we have this Crane, who's not an important character at all, and I don't think he even has a real name aside from Crane. Uh, he you know is a little bit uh, a little bit different from your standard Cars character. He's one of the few that you know is not actually a car. Uh, again, alongside Siddeley and the boat from the first year. Uh, but, you know, he's got f crane functionality. He can uh, move his arm up and down, can angle this in and out. Uh, he's got the hook on there, which can hook onto things. And, you know, it's holding this little oil container here in this set. Uh, you can move this up and down, um, but they do have this piece stuck in here to keep it from going all the way down. Uh, you could angle that out if you wanted to be able to go down further. But this is um, what that's for. And I guess that does make it a little bit stronger and able to hold a little bit more weight. It does sort of want to tip, but when you attach this whole base to studs, it will want to do that less so. This down here is a sticker, and the stickers in my copy of the set uh, sort of want to peel up at the edges. They're not the ones that want to, you know, flake off and break and die because they're transparent backed, but the ones that I had just, uh, the sticker sheet was folded a little bit, and a couple of them had been pre-applied, and those ones, you know, want to kind of peel off a little bit, but they're still fine for now. And these actually sort of are meant to look like um, they have holes in them, but those are just sticker designs, and they're stickered on both sides. And I do like his uh, face print brick, which is also exclusive. Uh, but, you know, he's one of the few 
Carr's characters to use stickers on his design. There are some grill plates down here, and you just take this whole plate and you're going to stick it all on the oil rig, which we'll see in a second. Before we see that, though, we have to take a look at Leland Turbo, and I'm really just glad they included this. Uh, it's, it's such a, like, unimportant thing, but it's, it's just cool. It's got this printed 2x2 two two tile as well as a sticker on two sides of this brick. Um, if you don't remember who this guy is, he's the spy that had been on the oil rig, um, who's in the same agency as Finn or whatever, and provided the intel to Rod Dark Redline, and then the bad guys found out about him and had him squished into a box, a cube. And his eyes weren't visible in the cube like that, but, you know, uh, Lego kind of did it for a comedic effect. And there's also an assortment of random other things, uh, like cargo-wise. I guess this sort of counts to another little oil can. Uh, but uh, we have two stickers here. Uh, one is a box of car parts, and the other one here is this box that Leland Turbo was here to find, because it contains the World Grand Prix camera. And this is actually like a stickered design of the camera that comes in the $20 set from this wave. Uh, or was it 20 or 15 The one that included uh, Agent Mater and the uh, parachute thing. Um, but... This, I didn't realize was in this set, and I was actually really pleasantly surprised when uh, I got it and saw that. Uh, the other thing here is just this little turret with a flick fire missile on there, and you know, the flick fire missile works the same as all the others, and I guess you can sort of use this to grab on if it's minifigures. I believe uh, the crane will also grab onto that. Yeah, so you, you can uh, you can use this, uh, have it get carried in conjunction with the crane. Uh, so, you know, that's uh, what this thing is for. But, you know, this uh, group of accessories all gets uh, thrown about onto the little platform. So this here is the official final build. This is what the instructions show you exactly where they show you to put all the accessories and everything. And it's a pretty large thing. Like, it's very reasonably tall for a $50 set. Uh, we do have this flame up here, which, uh, you know, it's uh, tied to this Technic thing, but don't worry, that doesn't actually do anything at all, aside from allow you to, if you want to, spin it right here and get the Technic mechanism to spin. There's no, like, activation or anything, nothing around there to do anything special, uh, but, you know, it is a thing. This flame up here, interestingly enough, uh, was last used in 2013, and, you know, is the old version where it went from dark red to trans orange. Uh, versus the new ones, which are now dark red to trans yellow. So I have a little bit more of a difference in uh, design there. Um, but we will take a closer look at that top section up there. But I want to start with you know, the base section here. Um, and Graham doesn't really have a place to stay based on the official uh, you know, configuration. But down below, we have these little uh, supports which have stickers on them. And they're all the same sticker, uh, so they all the same rust pattern, and, you know, they all look uh, pretty good, and you can fold it open like this, and create sort of two different shapes for an oil rig, and, you know, that, that's fine, um, I, I guess it works pretty well, uh, but, you know, there's nothing too crazy special there, and this whole platform is, you know, the platform that you saw before, it's just attached via jumper plates. And that's kind of how most of this uh, whole set is done. You just throw a bunch of things onto places. And, you know, the real basic uh, base structure of this is just like a platform full of jumper plates. Uh, this all comes off too. And, you know, if you don't pull that off, this is your oil platform. Um, so it is like that. And I guess we'll take a look at each of these smaller subsections, too, separately. We already saw this. It's nothing special at all. It does that, and that is your full functionality of the base platform. Uh, now, moving on to this one, which I think is the most interesting, this little container. You can sort of use this as just a shipping container. These are all stickers on uh, large uh, panel pieces. Um, you know, the ones that look like that on the inside and, you know, have a plate wide. Uh, these doors in green are exclusive to this set, which is cool. Is what these... No, I don't think these are. I think door window frames might be. I don't know. Um, but, you know, for the fact that 
these door inserts themselves are has jumper plates on top in order to uh, you know actually allow things to stick on top of it but you can remove those if you would like to make this just a container but I think it still looks fine as just a container with those on top and those on top allow it to attach this uh, helipad onto them and there's no helicopter so it's just uh, for visual appeal I guess and you can sit a car up on top of it uh, it does have this little winch thing which you can use to raise and lower things and that can also be combined with one of these uh, these pieces here and this is you know tied on so that's why they include an extra like of this part and you don't just swap it out because otherwise you'd have to tie it every time but you can raise and lower that and it is what it is there's one sticker on the top and then we move to the section that has some verticality and inside here there is this little control panel which again has one of these things so it can be used by the crane you can pick it up and it just has a little danger button and some other controls it looks fine but you know cars can't really interact with it and other than that in here there's nothing at all um, you know even if you were to remove all those things you can barely fit Professor Z inside so I guess you could view it as like a little, I don't know, secret hiding spot. If you wanted to just pull this out, it would be a whole lot easier to get in there too. But you can also just leave it as the little control area um, for no one to use. And around the sides, we do have this sticker here, uh, which my version of that wants to peel up. I don't think that's a common experience with all sets, uh, or all versions of the set. But uh, this sticker over here with the three, again, looks pretty good, but uh, mine wants to peel up just a little. Uh, but, you know, it's a, it's a pretty decent, fine-looking thing. The majority of what this is designed to do is just, you know, create a little bit of uh, verticality and visual appeal. And you can remove this top section here, which is the part that really makes it look like an oil rig. Um, and, you know, this will allow you to, you know, get that flame in there. And, you know, it, uh, it's the really tall section. Uh, but it looks good on the whole. Uh, it's pretty simple, doesn't use too many pieces, and gets the point across. Uh, it also has uh, some little random stuff, like a fire extinguisher, little control thing, some of these. These are two stickers, um, which, you know, those are fine. has a little chain on the side, I don't know what that's about exactly. Uh, again, has one of these things, which, uh, those are relatively uncommon. It also has one little action feature, which allows you to send that little thing flying, which is pretty easy and works just fine. And now that we've seen all of the individual sections, in order to put this thing together, uh, you really just start placing the stuff on jumpers. And you know, we can throw that there. And you, you can really rearrange this however you want. You could like put this down here if you wanted the whole thing to be shorter. Maybe it doesn't fit on your regular display. Um, we can't put it on that side because it already has that. But we, we could do that if we wanted to. And you know, that, that would work just fine. Uh, obviously, the way that the instructions tell you to put it together, if you know, if, if you want to do it that way, is to make this tall. And I just picked up a jumper that I should not have. But you know, the instructions tell you to make it a nice tall oil rig, which you can do pretty easily. Um, you could also, you know, put this guy wherever you want. Uh, maybe this actually might make. I mean, this is where the instructions tell you to put them, but, you know, whatever you want really works. And you can also not use this uh, little um, container as a platform if you wanted to. You could just put the helipad straight down and, you know, maybe put the container just like that. And then, you know, throw the random other stuff wherever. Uh, like, we can throw the camera up here and the car parts next to it, and then that would get catapulted. And then we can throw Leland Turbo right over here. And we still have room for, you know, a character up there. Uh, let's see. And I guess we could put Professor Z up on top of that. And then have Finn doing his thing down below in the water. And, you know, it, it's pretty rearrangeable. Again, you know, you can take the container, you can even move this around too, if you want to pull this out and maybe put Leland Turbo uh, hidden in there, and then you know, throw this on that, 
this up here maybe, and then we have this whole area here where we can we can take this, throw it here, you know, maybe move the control panel around, and then we have room to comfortably fit both of the car bad guy characters on top of the uh, platform. You know, there's a lot of potential for rearrangeability and customizability, and in that regard, I do think that this is a pretty good playset of this sort of location. It's not nearly big enough to play out some of the really cool scenes from the movie that take place on the oil rig, like the whole chase. There's no like track here, so you can't do that. But I think that you know it gets a good amount of things across. I do like that little um, feature there too. That's you know the closest you can get really to that uh, sort of little uh, action scene, I guess is the proper word I'm looking for. But now yeah, overall, I think that uh, this is a pretty respectable set. Now appearance-wise, you know, it, it's not a collector's giant display set, but I do think that without too much difficulty you could modify this into a decent looking city oil rig, which we've never gotten a city oil rig before. We've gotten like a employee exclusive thing, um, you know, for some sort of uh, little uh, oil company, or it might have actually been for all Lego employees when they installed some oil rigs somewhere. I don't know, but you know, it's it's a decent set, and I'm happy with it. Provides you know some good exclusive variants. Uh, I mean, I for one am happy that they introduced a new print for Professor Z and the new print for Finn. I think you know they could easily have gotten away with just using the old versions of even all three of these characters, but, you know, it's, it's nice that they made every figure in this set something special. I don't know, I just appreciate it. And this is also a cool feature, too. Uh, just the ability to turn Finn like that. It works so well for the skiing version. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys all next time. Bye, everyone.